Hello and welcome to Experiment Doll. Today we'll be making my version of Mini Tour, which I would assume is the older sister of Mini Tour. Something about it just reads older sister. So I'm going to be using this Claudine Wolf and let's begin. I have my sketched idea for her outcome ready, so let's start by removing her factory paint with acetone. Once that's done, we're going to cut off her hair and remove all the plugs from inside her head. Then we're going to cut off her ears and reposition them lower on the head. Once that's done, we're going to make the armature for her horns. For a more in-depth tutorial, check out Dolightful's videos. As you can see, I had painted half of her face, but it started chipping off, so I decided to remove it and repaint it later. Once the armatures are sculpted, you're going to want to cover her old ear holes. You can use fabric or I just use really thin layers of liquid fusion. I then covered the head in aluminum foil and pinned it in place so that the pieces would stay in place while they dried. You can now sculpt the horns. I used a two-part epoxy clay. And using a tool of your choice, I'm using a razor blade. You're going to want to kind of smudge the clay into the head, if that makes any sense. You could leave the horns this white color, but I decided I wanted a more bone horn color. So I'm painting it with acrylic paint. Then I'm painting the scalp a nice yellow to match the hair I plan on rooting her with. Little discrepancy here, but this is the time you would actually want to paint on the colorations of the face. I was actually very inspired by people who suffer from vitiligo and used a lot of reference photos of that to create her. Now that she's all painted, it's time to reroute her. I'm using this medium length lemonade color from dollyhair.com and I'm also using a reroute tool that I got from dollyhair.com. Begin the reroute, plug around the hairline, spiraling in towards the part, and save the part for last. Time to move on to the body. I gave her a set of Cleo hands for a more delicate look. And using the same cream color that you used on the face, you're going to want to paint on organic, kind of random splotches on her body to resemble a cow.
Once she's all painted, you're going to want to seal that all in with a couple layers of DuraClear Matte Varnish. After reattaching her head and a quick boil wash, some of her paint had chipped off again, so we're going to have to cover that up, but let's start with the face up. Trying not to get any paint on her hair, I patch up those little chipped areas. And after three layers of Mr. Super Clear, I begin by sketching in her details with a watercolor pencil. I'd like to add that I did later sculpt her a new nose to look more cow-like, but here I am painting on her nose. Adding her scleras to both sides because even though the other color looks white, it's more of an off-white cream color. Deciding I didn't like the freckles, so I removed it using some water. Sketching in her eyebrows. Painting on her eyebrows. I thought doing a yellow brow on her right side would be very reminiscent of vitiligo, but I decided it just didn't look right. Painting on her eyeliner, as you'll come to notice, my process isn't really set to a specific way of doing things, a specific timeline. Even though I freehand painted the left side's eyelashes, for some reason I decided to sketch them in with a watercolor pencil for the right eye. And using that same watercolor pencil, I made the outline for her lips and filled that in with acrylic paint. You'll see me subtly add touch-ups to her eyes and body. That's just because the paint didn't turn out the way I wanted it to, and I wanted it to have a more even coat. And here something weird happened with the lips where the paint got inside the lips and dried in a weird way, so I'm scraping that out. I sketched in her iris shape with a blue watercolor pencil. And the lips dried chunky, so I sanded that off. And I'm filling that iris shape in with a nice pale sky blue. I add a little cream colored patch under her eye and touch up her lipstick. Moving on to the right eye, I use acrylic to add the eyelashes. Switching back to the left eye, I do a royal blue on her lid, mimic it on the right, and then do a gold color to highlight the brow bone on both sides. I add a brown color under the right eye that matches the brown skin tone to mimic the cream tone under the left lash line. 
I fixed the lash lines that got messed up during the painting process. After touching up the makeup on the right side, I sketch in her iris with that blue watercolor pencil and paint over it with that same pale blue acrylic paint. I finally decided it was time to give her right eye some lashes. And it's okay to make mistakes. You can always edit them by adding a little more paint over it. Fixing any mistakes I made, I finish off the eyes by adding the signature lighter color to the bottom of her iris and then adding the black pupils. And obviously you can't forget the eye shines. With the eyes done, I seal the whole face in with a layer of satin Sculpey glaze. Time to style her hair. I begin by using the bridge of her nose as a guide for cutting her bangs. After boil washing and curling her hair, I move on to the shoes. I'm using Widona Spider's shoes from her fashion pack. I begin by cutting off the heel. And please be safe if you are under the age of 18. I am over 18, but I still managed to cut myself. I sculpt a cowtail heel using epoxy sculpt and using the shoe as a guide. After painting the heels the same cream color you used for the body, use a dark chocolate brown color to add spots. Once the epoxy is dry, you can epoxy on the heels to the shoe. And paint the cowtail fur a nice chocolate color to match. I cut up this nice pair of shorts that I may or may not have stolen from Claude to make a nice pair of booty shorts. And I made a doll size pattern of an article of clothing that I had and used it to make this kimono style cardigan. I used acrylic paint to paint on some cow tracks. Then I just used this blouse pattern from DG Requiem to make a little undershirt. Painted the tassel on this Barbie necklace gold and I'm done! I love her little cowbell earrings. My version of Minnie is a year older than Mary. And I wanted to include these photos as examples that even if you have an idea in mind, it's hard to translate something to doll scale, just like the overalls didn't turn out edgy like I wanted them to, they turned out more country. I hope you guys enjoyed, thanks so much for watching, and remember, curiosity killed the cat, but satisfaction brought it back.